Jerome is going to start today very soon with poetry. Go ahead, Jerome. Yes. So, uh, welcome everyone. So, yeah, it's Sunday morning, and I didn't want to uh, didn't want to bother you with something complex. So we're going to do poetry. Um, I'm Joe Martin, and I love programming, but I also love poetry, and I wondered if it would be possible to make a poem-oriented language. So, um, the, the basic thing is you write a poem and you hide the program inside it using some words you put inside the poem, and then when the poem is read by the machine, uh, it executes the hidden program. But to do that, I needed uh, some kind of, mach of machine on which uh, make the program work. So I need to find um, some kind of virtual machine I could uh, generate code for and to make the stuff execute. And so I tried to find um, a machine that would have uh, that would be simple and minimalist, but uh, complex enough to make some interesting stuff. And so, um, before revealing what kind of machine it is, it is I need to uh, make a quick demographic census in the room. Um, so the question is, who in the room was born, I, I wasn't, uh, who in the room was born in or before the 70s? Raise your hand. All right, all right, that's great. Um, now, who in the room is ready to go back right now to the 70s? Sure. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so, okay, special effects. I, uh, I have my... <laughs> so now we're in the 70s. And um, in the 70s, you might remember that uh, something that is called the Chip 8. So the Chip 8 was uh, one of the first ever creative virtual machine. Uh, it was created as a simple way to write programs directly in uh, Exadecima. Is, is the microphone working? Or am I doing that? Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, so it was created as a, um, uh, a way to write games easily. Um, it was in a time when C doesn't, does not, did not exist yet. Um, a lot of programming languages did not exist yet. You, you would write your program directly in hexadecimal. Like it's, you're nearly programming directly in binary. And so um, uh, there's the, the Wikipedia page of uh, chip eight. And so you could write programs like Pong or stuff like that. Um, and the, the first time the chip eight machine was announced was at that time, there was no internet. Uh, there was uh, magazines. So you would buy some magazines, and inside you would have the code uh, to implement the machine yourself. And so we're going back through the, the um, archive.org time machine, and we'll see uh, the Byte magazine from uh, 78. And inside that magazine, there was some, something called an easy programming system. And uh, it actually explains in a few pages how to program using that, uh, that machine. Um, are you ready for some advertising from the 70s? Because on every page, there's like, wow, check out that new dual drive mini floppy for pets. It's only $1,295. Great. So if we flip the page, wow. That's like a new graphic card. <laughs> okay, and there you have the um, uh, the complete list of instructions for the chip eight. So there's like only 35 of them, um, and you would write directly in hexadecimal there. So uh, the the first the first nibble, uh, it's called the nibble. It's like four bits. <coughs> Uh, would be the instruction, and then you would put the, the arguments for your instruction on the next symbol. So, for example, if you want to jump, you would put a one, and then the three symbols uh, would be the address you want to jump to. Uh, and so, uh, the system is interesting because there, there is uh, some 
easy way to make uh, graphics. For example, the the D. Uh, where is the D? It's it is is it, is it showing me? Yeah. Uh, yes, there. So there, uh, the, this instruction allows you to write on the screen. There's a 64 by 32 uh, pixel screen, and by just calling that you would uh, write a, uh, a sprite on the screen. So on the next page, you can see uh, it explains how to encode graphics um, inside the, the, the computer. And then there's uh, some coordinates <coughs> on the screen and stuff like that. Uh, there's the first truly silent motherboard. <laughs> uh, I love those ads. They're, they're awesome. And uh, it would. Uh, explain to you how to make some kind of space invader game. Um, there's like the, the workflow diagram, I think it's, it's there. Yeah, there's a workflow diagram for the, the program. So uh, yeah, you would be a child and read that and uh, try to understand how it works and get the, the game at the end. Um, and there's the full code for the game. So uh, you, you would type down all those bytes, and you would get the game. Um, it, it fits on only one page of a magazine. That, that's that's kind of awesome to see a complete game fits inside only one page of a magazine. And so I thought um, <coughs> this platform allows us to, uh, it, it's easy to implement, and I could uh, quickly make an emulator for that. And I want to try and see if I can write uh, some programs in this. But instead of writing hexadecimal values, you would write uh, poems. So um, to do that, you would need to, um, for, for every, um, every instruction, you would have a specific verb that you would use in your, uh, in your poem, and the verb would correspond directly to uh, a machine instruction. And so that's what I did, and um, you, can, uh, you can connect directly to um, relu.eu slash poem and try that, uh, try that by yourself. Um, so uh, I made a website in which you can type your poem down there. Um, but this one is a bit, um, it, it's not exactly a poem yet, it's uh, in transition, but it has the, the minimal stuff and I'll show you some other poems later. Um, so this one is exactly the same as the, the one we saw uh, with the rocket and stuff. And if I hit read, all right, I, I get the program from the, um, uh, the bike magazine. And <coughs> so, if I understand the game well, you, th this is a rocket, and you need to shoot down the alien by like launching the rocket at the right time, and you get points. All right. So um, if if you miss the rocket, I think uh, sometimes sometimes it misses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a, an extremely hard game. And <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I, I'm, I'm nearly, I'm nearly the, the best score. All right, I did nine out of nine, that's the best score. I, I couldn't do it, uh, that's the first time I get the, the highest score. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, um, I'm going to try some other uh, poems. Um, let's see, um, so this one... The, this is the first one I wrote when um, when I tried to um, uh, when I tried the platform. So uh, the way the poems work is you, you can give them titles. So the, the title would be uh, this part between uh, dashes, and then you would have some lines, uh, and the titles would allow you to jump and put labels inside your code to uh, jump from one part to the other. So um, uh, the way it works is paint here 
is the uh, verb for drawing something on the screen. Then uh, empty is the uh, argument zero, is the number zero. C is the number two, and water is also the number two. So uh, life is the number 15, thunder is the number 10, uh, steam is the number three, and there's a complete dictionary of correspondence between uh, nouns and numbers. Uh, I did that here. So um, there's numbers here. And so zero could be something like void, death, night, black holes, uh, emptiness, and something. And uh, there's like elements for every number. So you, you can write a poem using elements of nature and stuff like that. And that would translate into uh, machine code and passing arguments to functions. Um, so if I try this one, it should do something like, yeah. So um, it, uh, it goes through all the lines, putting a, a random one or zero on, uh, on the screen. <laughs> yes. Uh, and another one, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, this, this one is fun too. So this one is a bit longer and I didn't translate it yet into a complete poem. Um, <coughs> but it's a, a fully walking Tetris. So uh, you, you can actually play Tetris and oh yes, I'm gonna make a very bad line. And so uh, I, I could play I could play that for hours. <laughs> um, so um, the the next step here for this one would be to uh, translate it into a, a complete poem. For example, if we try to uh, translate the, the first part, <coughs> this is the code that draws the the base of the um, of the of the area of the game area. And so we could replace zero by uh, emptiness and uh, one by uh, by water and so we would say uh, add into the emptiness some water from your eyes something like that <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making this up on the go and that is the exact same program as the, the previous one we saw so uh, I could do that for every line and uh, try to create something interesting, maybe doing some rhymes or stuff. And um, that would still execute into uh, the Tetris program. So, um, so uh, the, the platform is, uh, is pretty complete now. There's, uh, there's like some other things going on. But for example, I, I wrote a pretty complete documentation like um, this is the dictionary and so you can see every available verb you can use inside the poem with all the arguments it takes. So uh, <coughs> the complete documentation helps a lot to write the, the poems you want uh, so that you can hide your program inside that poem. Um, if you want to try yourself, you can connect to uh, that, uh, that, that's online on, uh, on my website. And so you, you can try making some poems yourself. You can try the, the poems that are on the <coughs> GitHub page. If you go to the GitHub page and in the poem section, uh, there's some other poems you can try. And so uh, if you make, during the day, if you make something interesting, you can uh, post it on, uh, on Mastodon uh, with the hashtag code poetry. And so uh, I'm, I'm eager to see what kind of poems uh, you can write uh, with that machine. So, um, Thank you for your time, and uh, if you have any questions or stuff. Uh. Yeah, okay. Uh, you, can, you can still do questions while I see Yeah, sure. Yes? So you talk about rhymes, and uh, so yeah. you have words that you don't. Uh, or go, go into the semantics of the program that you can just use at the end? So the, the, the question was, uh, the, 
does the rhyme has something to do with the poem or can you uh, use any words to, to make the rhymes? And so actually, yes. Um, <coughs> currently, the rhymes don't do anything inside the program, but mm -hmm. I'm planning maybe the rhymes could be uh, encoding something inside the program that would be interesting. Uh, another thing I thought about was, would be a um, expert mode in which um, instead of encoding the numbers using pre-made uh, a dictionary of pre-made numbers, uh, you would encode the numbers using the maybe the number of vowels, the total number of vowels inside the line, for example. Mm -hmm. So you would need to write a poem with the correct number of vowels to encode the, the correct number. Uh, that's an idea I have for later. Um, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe you impose even a restriction, or a sonnet form, for example, or limerick form, and then you're only allowed to uh, have these kind of programs. Yes, so the, um, the question was, uh, is there any limitations in the way you can write this, uh, the poems? And so right now there's not a lot of limitation. It's uh, only uh, using the, the dictionary words. That's the only limitation for now. But <coughs> that could be interesting to uh, add some other limitations to, uh, to the way you write it. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yes? So you talked about uh, Mastodon to share the, uh, your creation. Would there be a way to do some code go but with the most beautiful most beautiful poems to solve uh, one problem, so it would be pretty creative because mm. you could give one challenge in one way and just give uh, this problem and everyone would have their own solution, their own poem, really different. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, that was uh, a bit of a question and also a suggestion, uh, an interesting suggestion. It was um, in Mastodon you could post um, poems and try to have some code goal thing about what would be the better uh, poem for one kind of code. Uh, you could have a program and see all the people trying to um, suggest their, their, their version of the, of the poem for, for a specific code. Yeah. So if you want to Thank you. Take them off with. Thank you very much. For